thinking about enjoying a lovely meal with these views of New York is definitely sparking my appetite. You've never seen a city look like this before. I'm Sarah Gore and welcome to Open House NYC. This week we are coming to you from this chic duplex penthouse in the heart of Chelsea. As soon as you step in from the foyer, you notice the light streaming through the floor to ceiling south facing windows that show off expansive city views. Check out the open loft like layout of the main entertaining space that flows seamlessly to the gracious terrace for easy indoor outdoor living. Upstairs, there are two delightful bedrooms, including this bright primary bedroom suite. In all, the home is over 2,000 square feet of modern New York living meets classic European charm. We are soaring into the show this week with stager extraordinaire and friend Cheryl Eisen. She shows off one of her newest projects, this jaw-dropping penthouse on the Upper East Side. Now I checked this place out myself and it is truly unique. An architectural ode to what makes our city so special. Take a look. Hi, I'm Cheryl Eisen, president of Interior Marketing Group. And if you're the type of person that wants to live above it all, then you're in luck because I'm about to show you this duplex penthouse we designed at 180 East 88th Street, the tallest building on the Upper East Side. Let's check it out. This jaw-dropping five-bedroom home encompasses over 5,500 square feet of interior space and 3,500 square feet of private outdoor spaces. It's unlike anything you've ever seen. As you step into this great room, the first thing you'll notice are these huge arched windows and this Guggenheim-esque white sculptural staircase. Taking inspiration from the curvature of these features, we furnish this room with two curved sofas, a round coffee table with ball bases, a custom oval area rug, and a statement chandelier with cylindrical milk glass lights. We maintained a neutral color palette throughout this home, layered with textured fabrics in subtle jewel tones that complement these incredible views. Views that continue into this second living room, because homes like this need more than one. Here, our talented team of fabricators really helped bring this room to life. They dressed the IMG design sofa in soft velvet olive fabric and the armchairs in a sumptuous brown mohair. They created an oversized walnut coffee table to anchor the room. And finally, our IMG art collective created this abstract wall sculpture in an eggplant hue. But what really makes these great rooms great are these two adjoining covered terraces with views to the north, the south, and the West. Yes, that is Central Park, but there are plenty more views to see. Let's continue. And thinking about enjoying a lovely meal with these views of New York is definitely sparking my appetite. Here in the dining space, we created a bespoke 20 foot tall monochromatic installation that extends to the second floor, accentuating the room's impressive height. We anchored this area with a dark wood dining table, surrounded by rich cocoa-colored velvet chairs that contrast with the bright white interiors. This primary bedroom suite is the perfect place to unwind at the end of a long day. We highlighted the unique curves of the bedroom's walls with this custom-made upholstered headboard that features built-in sconces and gives the bed an architectural presence. My key to creating an alluring and relaxing bedroom is found in soothing tones and layered textures. I also love when a bedroom's large enough to create a separate seating moment. But my favorite aspect of not just this bedroom, but the whole home are the swooping arches of this private loggia which frames Central Park views. You've never seen the city look like this before. And speaking of New York like you've never seen it before, there's one more space I've got to show you, and that's the roof terrace. 
This terrace is designed for some serious entertaining and offers 360 degree panoramic views of the city, a 14 person dining table, and an outdoor gas burning fireplace. Let the party begin. Thank you for joining me today on this tour of an Upper East Side gem above all others, literally and figuratively. Hope you enjoyed it. I wasn't wrong about those views, right? And speaking of views, our next home in Burbank has those too. Don't go anywhere, you are not gonna wanna miss it. Welcome back everyone, and now we check out this spectacular hilltop home that has quickly become one of the most recognizable in the valley. Affectionately dubbed the Burbank Castle and even the Harry Potter house, this regal custom-built estate features exquisite design and architectural detail all throughout its 5,300 square feet. Enjoy! My name is Scott Rosenthal. Welcome to the Burbank Castle. Come on in. So this home is called the Burbank Castle and it is called the Burbank Castle because it was inspired by the Victorian Tudor architecture that comes from England. So this custom built home has completely unobstructed panoramic views of the valley. You will not find another house on either side of this property blocking your views. So as you're sitting here, you can see the French washed walls. You can see the beautiful distressed beams. You can see the hand painted murals. My favorite part, the accordion glass elevator door. Let's have a walk into the formal dining room so you can see more there. As we enter the formal dining room, we're again greeted by these beautiful distressed beams. And as you can see, the custom craftsmanship throughout this room goes from ceiling to floor. So when you look up, you can't help but see this incredible, beautiful Venetian painted ceiling. It is wrapped by this cracked wood facade, but actually it is hand painted. And as you can see, this chandelier complements this incredible ceiling. Dinner is best served here with the lights dimmed low, taking in these custom details. But before we eat, we have to cook. Let's go see the kitchen. So as we enter the kitchen, you're greeted by travertine, which is one of my favorite materials today, which leads you to this incredible sink. Take in this incredible view and wash dishes here. I could get used to this. What about you? So this kitchen serves as the heart of the home. And if you can imagine yourself cooking beautiful meals here with your friends and your family, imagine what's next and enjoying it with them in the bar area. So as I mentioned, the owner of this home lived in England for many years and was inspired by Victorian Tudor architecture. So as you look around, you're going to see these incredible copper stamp ceilings. I really love how this bar area transitions into the outside. You're greeted by these beautiful French doors. And as you come outside, you take in just this unobstructed view of the valley. So this room is flanked by dueling bars. And you can imagine having your friends and family over with some live music, socializing, having fun, laughing. And then we come up to this incredible staircase. Ah, the primary suite. We have 20 foot high ceilings, beautiful loft upstairs, and just a bathroom to die for. What's special about this primary suite is that the ceiling height is much more generous than the rest of the house. You have this beautiful stained glass that welcomes in an abundance of natural light. Just as we have downstairs, the 200 year old darker maple floors, upstairs we have a bit lighter of a tone to complement the darker beams. These floors are perfectly imperfect. crown jewel of the castle is this lion's den. So the current owners of this home use this lion's den as a bonus room. You can imagine the possibilities are endless with this space, with the ceiling height, with the scale of this room, your imagination could go wild. This room has two vantage points, one of which overlooks the valley and the other which overlooks the saltwater pool in the front. I'll meet you guys outside. So once we get outside, you can see below me, we have this saltwater pool. And then of course, this incredible architecture, every stone, every brick, every roof tile is custom on this home. And you can see the scale and quality of it from a different view once you're outside. And once we get out back, you can understand why this house is called the Burbank Castle. If you wanna live the regal life, you live the regal life from here.
That's it for the tour. Thank you for coming and I look forward to seeing you at the next property. Well, we are going to take a quick break, but when we come back, we join interior designer Alexander Doherty for a look at one of his newest projects. Welcome back, everyone. Now we join interior designer Alexander Doherty on the Upper West Side. His clients were recent empty nesters, and they turned to Alexander to create a stylish yet livable home that they could share with friends and family. Take a look. One of the most exciting things about visiting a project for the first time is walking in and immediately trying to imagine the potential that you can exploit from a place. My name is Alexander Doherty. I have an interior design firm here in New York City and welcome to one of our more recent projects here at the iconic El Dorado on New York's Upper West Side. So what you'll notice when you first walk into the apartment is the use of color. In the gallery, we have chosen to use a very saturated Prussian blue mat on the walls. We contrasted that with all of the millwork, the doors, the door headers, the arches, the ceilings in a high gloss lacquer. It was a great way to bring light into the space. The lighting that we have bounces off and creates pools of light and reflection throughout the whole gallery. The gallery definitely commands attention, and that is something that I wanted to maintain as we walked into the living room. This is a living room that we designed for entertaining. We wanted to try to create as many seating areas as possible in this living room without it feeling cluttered. So we have the classic arrangement here of the sofa facing the fireplace with the two armchairs flanking it. Both of these armchairs are actually swivel and that particular armchair can swivel around and connect that conversation group. The homeowner's piano was elsewhere in the apartment and was being underused. So we decided to bring the piano into the living room and really set it center stage. We wanted to achieve lighting that was harmonious so we decided that we would mix between overhead, table lamps, floor lamps, and sconces. What I wanted to do was to create a haven of peace away from the chaos of New York City. And I think that we've achieved that. As usual in New York pre-wars, we have that big problem. What do you do with a formal dining room? What I like to do is combine it, if at all possible, with a library. Cabinetry already existed, but it had been done in the 1980s. So it was cherry wood, which was obviously very popular back then. And I convinced the homeowners with a certain amount of difficulty to allow us to paint the wood, this very soft, pearly gray, and immediately the space felt much calmer. The room is primarily gray with green accents, which is all very harmonious, it's very pleasing on the eye, but it has enough personality through the introduction of one or two other pieces to not make it boring. Because boring is not what we do. So here we are in the primary bedroom. Like many New York apartments, the challenge for this bedroom was storage. So we decided to build this rather impressive millwork piece, which encompasses both hanging space, drawers, and a television. We wanted to choose a palette that was going to be pleasing to both of my clients. In order to achieve that, I wanted something that was relatively neutral, but at the same time had personality. So we opted for a platinum scheme that is mixed with a very rich, emerald green. Overall, this bedroom is about serenity, calm, and peace. That is certainly what my clients wanted. And I think that we've given them this through this rather pleasing and tranquil palette. As I said at the beginning of this talk, one of the exciting things as a designer is to walk into a space and see how you're going to maximize the potential but it's also extremely satisfying to finish a space, to allow the clients to come back and live within it. I hope you've enjoyed this tour as much as we have, and we look forward to seeing you again on our next project. 
Don't go anywhere. When we come back, we are at this Greenwich Village duplex. Welcome back, everyone. Now we're in Greenwich Village at this unique duplex with architect Paul Reber. Paul channeled a tectonic design language for the home, using straight lines and sophisticated architectural features that subtly connects with the building's industrial past while enhancing the contemporary gallery-like ambiance of the spaces. You will see what I mean when you watch. What I love about design and architecture is creative problem solving. I find that some of the most beautiful and rewarding details come from a problem and how it's resolved. I'm Paul Reber and my firm is Reber Design Architecture. We're here today in Greenwich Village at 30 East 10th Street and uh, welcome to my project. This apartment is a duplex and this stair was the biggest challenge and it's the most rewarding aspect of the apartment. It's steel with wood treads, uh, glass and railings and one of the most interesting is this sculptural handrail that starts on the lower level and it bends all the way up continuously and it's about 33 feet long. Part of the beauty of the stair is when you walk up and down it you experience it and it's three-dimensional art. While downstairs is mostly the private spaces, the public spaces are upstairs, and let's take a look at the unique details. Here we are in the main living space. We wanted to create a tectonic language of form that carries throughout the space. Here we are in the kitchen, and you can see that the forms are very modern, very linear, and it's all about color blocking and the finishes. So these floating soffits is part of what I talk about as a tectonic language, and you can see it through this, the square shapes, the blocking, and the floating planes. So there was a distinctive effort to keep things linear and separated and understandable. In this project, a lot of the focus became on the windows and the detailing that are part of the architecture. We created these casings that go floor to ceiling and it really elongated it and it made a very unique detail around a typical window. These columns in the space are structural and what we did is they're clad on the sides with half inch steel plates and the infill is an etched gray mirror. In the living room we wanted to create a space where you can have a comfortable conversation. In addition to the floating planes and the cove light that beautifully light up the ceiling, we also incorporated these cube lights that can focus light on the art. Creating a specific language of form and detail and a limited palette of materials can really pull a space together and make it beautiful. Thank you for taking a look. I look forward to seeing you on the next one. Don't go anywhere because just after the break, we are at the chic, creative Los Angeles home. Welcome back everyone, and now we're in Mid Wilshire, Los Angeles at the home of creative director and fashion blogger Madeline Furlong. Madeline fell in love with the original details, which she highlighted with an eclectic mix of vintage and contemporary pieces that reflect her personality. Check it out. Hi, I'm Madeline Furlong. I'm a fashion blogger and creative director living in Los Angeles, California. Welcome to my apartment. I like to keep the color palette pretty neutral and focus on textures and finding and sourcing secondhand furniture and pairing it with more modern design elements. A perfect example of that design philosophy is my living room, which is the first room you see when you walk through the front door. So the coffee table is one of my favorite vintage finds. I found it on Craigslist for $200, and turns out that it's actually a Carl Springer piece from the 1980s. It's resin, but it looks like marble, which is pretty cool. The oversized ottoman adds both design and functionality to the room. It creates this cozy environment, plus it adds additional seating. 
Above the lounge chair is a lighting sconce and that corner is accented by a vintage Gibson guitar that was a gift from my father. And that whole section actually hides a door into my bedroom. And since I didn't want to use that door, I decided to just completely close it off. I made a large scale painting to just set on top of the credenza and accented it with an orchid and some vases. And I loved that I didn't even have to get out my screwdriver. Moving on, the last space I want to talk about is my bedroom. I designed the space to be very calm, relaxed, and sanctuary-esque. A space where I could lounge in bed with a cup of coffee and maybe a few work emails. I never mind when there are slight imperfections in the furniture pieces that I do purchase. A great example of this is the bench right in front of my bed. It's the perfect space to throw all my clothes on when I'm getting ready, but it also adds a really nice rustic element to the room because of the imperfections in it. In the corner, I have a terrazzo planter on top of a few fashion shoe boxes. Terrazzo is one of my favorite design trends at the moment, and I wanted to add a little bit of that into my space. Thank you guys so much for spending a bit of time with me in my LA home. This apartment has been a complete labor of love and an amazing experience to really showcase who I am through the design that I created. I can't believe the show's already over. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up. Like and subscribe, because we're going to keep giving you these amazing homes.